Tonight this story comes from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, my home country but not my province. Tonight we find out what lurks in the woods of Calgary besides crackheads and hillbillies, so stay tuned. About two hours west of Calgary, deep into the foothills but not into the mountains, I was driving home from a hiking trip with buddies, me, two guys, and two other girls. It's about 1am and the car makes an unpleasant sound. That clutch burning smell though. Poor old Subaru gets sluggish going up a hill and then cuts out just at the top. I put the parking brake on and we just sit in the car, planning how to get home. We all just sit and chat for a while, waiting for our ride, they're about two hours away. It became pretty relaxing actually. We were all tired and had a great day, and we just sat in the car debriefing and spending some quality time together. A half hour later, one and a half hours, left on the stranded clock. A rusty red pickup truck pulls over behind us. That feel when I'm pretty afraid of hillbillies. They walk up to our window and see if we need help with anything, see if we need help or anything else. One of them is clearly hammered, but I don't think he was the driver. Blah blah hiking trip, blah blue clutch, blah blah tell them the story so far. The drunk one stumbles about the whole time, so it was very noticeable when he suddenly stopped. In the light of my car's interior, I could see him dumbstruck pupils fully dilated, staring into the ditch. After a few seconds of silence, we all look around to figure out what he's staring at. The atmosphere becomes tense, everyone starts freaking out a little bit. Whoop whoop! The police car snuck up on us, I hope you don't mind that sound effect of a police car, I know it was terrible. The police car snuck up on us, scared the shit out of everyone, in the, scared the shit out of everyone with the siren. Two RCMP dudes get out. For those who don't know, RCMP stands for Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and it's the federal police force here. Two RCMP dudes get out, sweating buckets and in full battle regalia. One of them pants something unintelligible, the other remains composed, asks the standard, Is there a problem here? Have any of you been drinking? Etc. I ask why Cop 1 is freaking out. He thinks he saw something. I explain how Drunky McRedneck saw something too. Cop 2 flinches, almost reaches for a gun. He gets super serious. Where was it? It? Cop 2 leans in and whispers, trying not to scare anyone. We believe someone, armed and dangerous, has made their way out here. Cop 2, half whispering, What I'm going to do is I'm going to send these other guys on their way. But since you're stuck, it's best if the constable and I stay here until your ride arrives. Cop 2 announcing, all right, you good old boys can make your way home, and the constable and I are going to stay with you, with you campers, until your ride is here. No telling what you might run into this late up in, this late in the hills at night. Cop one is silent. He's peering into the trees, hand near something on his belt. Cop two is trying to keep control of the situation, but cop one is kind of freaking everyone out. Stranded clock, one hour and fifteen minutes remaining. The cops take a sidebar, hushed in frantic whispers. My friends and I are all silent. Everyone but, let's call her Kate, is more confused than scared. Kate is just plain fucking scared. Anonette, we have to go. Now, we have to leave. Dude, calm down. We're not going anywhere without a working vehicle. We'll just wait for the friend with the van to get here. Mob psychology. Kate's starting to freak everyone else out. Let's call him Robbie. I'm starting to get a little freaked out, guys. Shut up. Cop 2 is back. He taps on the window. Holy jump scare. Everyone screams a little. Cop 2 suddenly see me a little afraid. Listen, I don't want to freak anyone out, but something's come up. Just stay in the vehicle and keep your windows up. It's very important that you stay put. No one leaves the car until I say so. You're about to see a lot more police officers show up. Don't be alarmed over it. Or, uh, don't get more alarmed. His radio cuts in. Unit 3, by the creek. It's got terrified screams. Help. Send help. We're all silent for a second as the walkie-talkie cuts out. More cops are just showing up, asking questions like, It's near here, right? What happened by the creek? Pain screams. Some become audible. Louder. Closer. More frantic by the second. After a minute and a half of the most palpable tension I've ever experienced, of Kate and, let's call her Anne, sobbing in the back, 
half a dozen cops frantically radioing. The screams are very near us. A cop darts out of the trees, screaming at the top of his lungs. It took him. It took him. The cop whips out his gun, and as he chambers, as he clambers behind a cop car and starts shooting into the trees, the guns are out. Pistols, shotguns, rifles, everything. Sounds like the Battle of Vimy Ridge, to be honest, out here. All screaming and incessant gunshots. The cops are in full panic mode, wasting ammo like something you don't even see in movies. Something wails, horribly, louder than the gunshots. I hear, I hit the fucker, muffled by the sounds of gunpowder. They stop after a few more seconds. Everyone in the car slowly, 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 slowly starts to unduck, but cop two yells, stay down. Another horrible wail. All of the cops are silent. I hear a few weapons hit the ground. I look up. All of the cops are gawking at something in the air above the ditch, illuminated in the searchlight. It's long, thin, and wrinkly. It's human-shaped but with no clothing, no facial features, and no genitals. Just tough, wrinkly skin covered in infections and pustules draped over a big, vaguely human-shaped frame. And it's just floating there, just levitating, about 20 feet off the ground, almost doing that ballerina pose that Superman does when he floats. It had no eyes, but I could feel it staring. I woman out and start sobbing quietly. I can feel it focusing on me. Bang! One last shot and it wails some more and it flies away. It was another 45 minutes before our ride showed up. We were all huddled down in my car the entire time. The cops didn't seem afraid anymore. They just seemed dejected, like they had failed. They all stood around silently, looking down to their thermoses as they stripped off their body armor and drove off, one car at a time. When our ride showed up, one last car was sitting there behind us. Its cops one and two from before got out and talked to the friend with the van, before letting him see us. Those guys looked pretty scared. They told me not to ask you what happened. If something's scaring the heavily armed dudes that much, maybe I won't ask. And that was the end of it. We rode home in silence. I'm almost afraid to make eye contact as if the slightest communication would make what happened even more real. We still go hiking sometimes, but we never talk about that. And we don't wait too long to hit the road either. So what did you think of the story? I thought it was a little fun one, to be honest. You know, again, I never make any claims to validity of these. I just find them fun. I like them. Some of them are creepy. So, you know, just uh, subscribe for more if you like them, and uh, I'll keep posting them. Have a good one.